All right. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. We cannot deliver all of these innovative conversations without you. So if you're watching this, please go and thank them. Check out their website. And if you need any of their stuff, ask them to show you what they got. and Maybe they can help you out. All right. Let's jump into it. Let's bring Diego onto the show. Diego, my friend, how are you? Pretty good about yourself, Dave. Man, I am recovering from a week at advancing prefabrication out in Phoenix, Arizona, but uh, it was a great week. It was. It was. It was a great week. Some really interesting things on the floor. There was a lot of interesting things on the floor, a lot of great discussions. Uh, so Diego was out there at the same time I was out there, and that was the first time we actually met in person. We've talked over the years here and again. Uh, actually, no, we met at IBS briefly. I was running around with my head cut off, I think. But uh, Diego, this is going to be a great conversation. One, because you have been building all around the world. Uh, two, you're using light gauge steel and fiber cement. You're an expert in it to include building in the middle of nowhere, right? The Amazon, maybe. I don't know where that picture yeah. was. We're going to show you some of those things as well. Uh, but three, on the data and technology side, you have figured out how to really bring the technology to transform how you are building. And I'm excited to jump into all of this. And I know a lot of people out there are watching and want to learn about this. And I'm not sure if you're going to give us the tricks of your trade, but we're going to, we're going to pick at your brain and see if we can get it. There you go. There's no tricks. I always say the more the more I teach you, the more you need me. That's it. I love it. I love it. All right, Diego. So before we jump into it, we want to know everything about you from the moment you were born to this very moment in time. Do not leave out any of the good stuff from the hospital or we will call a family member and it might get embarrassing for you. So with that said, you only have about two minutes to do it. Why don't you tell us who Diego is and then we'll hop into the conversation. Oh, thank you, Dave. No, first, thanks for the opportunity. It's great to be on your show, always following and seeing everything you do. Uh, so who's Diego? Diego was born in Ecuador, South America. When I was 16, I had the opportunity with my family, my parents to migrate to the U.S., great country. Within that process, uh, I went to school, learned the language, became an architect, went to a very interesting uh, university, SciArc, where nowadays most of the teachers that I have are actually changing the history of architecture, which is pretty interesting to be influenced by a lot of these people. Within that process, after I graduate, worked for a couple of architecture firms here and there. Uh, and right in that point, I got offered by a Latin American big corporation, Swiss-owned corporation. They used to own fiber cement, steel manufacturers, and PVC to go down to South America and preach the non-bearing, I mean, the bearing solution or the stick framing solution to uh, fiber cement manufacturer who needed a structure to support their boards. So it was a big journey, travel around 14 countries in Latin America, did projects all over the place. And it was interesting because you have all the time zones. You'd be in Rhode Island doing an inspection of a fiber cement curtain wall. Uh, the next week you're at 90 degrees, 85% humidity, installing a low bearing project in La Habana, Cuba and then taking a plane back to Costa Rica to talk to the manufacturer and fix this process and make things better. So it was an interesting journey. And around that time, it spent about 10, 12 years with this manufacturer, was able to learn the best process of manufacture from the products, you know, and how the products influence the field and how the products have a big input in how a product is manufactured, how the, the, manuf the manufacturer in the DFM that we call it nowadays incorporates data, uh, quality controls, ISO, OSHA, everything that you have to deal when you are part of a manufacturer. Then I had the opportunity then to move back to United States, keep working for this fiber cement company, helping them introduce products into this country, move the kids and the family back to LA. And about 12 years, I took the journey with SWS and here where I am now. Was that two minutes or was that too short? No, no, no. Perfect. Well, you know, hey, we're not really counting the time here, but uh, <laughs> I just try and time it when you're wrapping up from where you were going on your personal story. Diego, I think, you know, your journey is incredible and it's going to be a lot of fun to talk about um, and walk through this process. And I'm going to ask you about what's on that TV screen behind you there, because I'm curious oh. as to what's going on and on that as well. But, you know, Good before we do jump into it, coming off of advancing prefabrication, is there anything that you learn? Did anything catch your eye? Is there any trends, anything that you want to share with the audience from your viewpoint being in this industry so long that you thought was cool, good, or maybe it just didn't excite you at all? 
First time I've been in that show, something that impacted me is that most of the guys in the software industry are architects. I was like, wow, actually the architects are actually thinking of this. You know, they were a lot of those guys looking at it. At the beginning, I went to a few shows, hear a lot of things. I was like, oh no, we're so far behind. But then as the days went by and I kept talking to people, we all have the same problems. You know, there's still not one solution out there. We're still trying to understand the process and be able to be more efficient in everything we do. But it's probably the best shows I've ever been. Great talent. I've been to IBS. I've been to every, you know, Metal Con, every building, every show that is out there. But I recommend people to go to this one if you really want to get down and dirty and everything else yeah. in the industry. Yeah. And, you know, some of the biggest names in the industry are there. And when I say names, not companies, but the people that yes. have the decision making power to do things. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun, Diego. Uh, there were several times I was with you and some of those big, big names are really trying to figure out how you're running your your panel shop and the software that you guys uh, have, have built and all this. So I think there's a lot of fun there. And hopefully we can dive into that a little bit. So. One of your big things is digital transfer. Tra digital transformation is a tool, not a strategy. What do you mean by that? When it comes to a tool, you know, digital transformation, it comes in different things. You know, here I'm, I'm in California, 80% of my labor speaks Spanish. So how do you track anything from a shop drawing, from an architectural drawing, from a Revit model to a shop that is putting pieces together? So for them, using technology and transformation, we create a color coding system where in QRC scanning, like by them scanning the process and digitizing every transaction that has been done from the procurement to the control of the schedules, the control of the process that we have developed and simple QRC codes feeding a database that accumulates all this information and that automatically that information gets digitized and it gets stored. And when we do an estimating, our estimating software goes and pulls back that information to give us a more accurate transaction or price of what uh, two of our main workers will be doing on a panel that is 20 gauge and putting a 16 gauge stats. You know, what was their outcome yeah. and their time? So, and that's what it is. It's just a tool for the different needs and different levels of people and users. Yeah, and I and I think this is where the mind shift comes in, and how people think of what these tools are, and what data is, and what tech is. It there, there's not just a transformation in the industry, but I think there's a mindset that is starting to change. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, very much. You know, people are understanding that it's good to have data. I mean, we've been yeah. collecting data for the past five years, and we see the outcome. You know, we see the mistakes we made. We see where the industry is going. We see where the trends are. When it comes to even the tools we use, you know, is it a DeWall? Is it a Milwaukee? What is the RPMs? What? So all these data has been put into this big collection of information that we have, and we're able to make the right decision as we move forward and taking on the different challenges that the company has. Yeah. So data as a connection point, it brings people together is kind of what we're just talking about right now. I mean, it's a connection point and it is bringing people together. What do you mean when you say that? So just to give an example, correct? We have an operation right now where most of our data is being collected here in the shop and is it migrates through servers and everything else to Columbia. So all of our brains when it comes to the data is in Colombia. Then we have architects and engineers in Ecuador, and then we have a team in Spain. A lot of yeah. these licenses that we pay have different time zones. You know, So what we do is we rotate the license across the world so that we work 24-7. And the data that has been given by the architects in Spain, by the labor in the shop, and by the programmers in Colombia is being collected as a source to influence the owners, the architects, the engineers. I mean, we go as far as details, fire ratings, assemblies, and we cost them on the spot. So it's it's an interesting challenge, you know, yeah. to go ahead. Yeah. So like, think about it. I mean, what, what is the biggest challenge in that? Like you say, like if people come to you and say, Diego, you know, this is, this is, you know, my data, this is what we're trying to do. You know, how, how, how do you start working through that? What would be some tips to somebody? Define your process, you know, to me, secret is in the joints. So when I see more architects involved, yeah. I'm happy. I'm like, this is where it starts. It all starts in the joints. The secret is in the joints. And as you move to the joints, you know, if you move from AutoCAD to Revit, it's almost like moving in Microsoft from Excel to Access. Now mm -hmm. you get a three dimensional view of the data. And if you're able to collect, create the families, organize your construction process, 
and have your architects think with the you know with an end in mind that is a data that is a purchase that is a product then everything just goes smooth and then you know we got like i told you we have the workers just scanning some of the information and then we show them the model and we see how their 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 influence in the shop which is just scanning a color code uh, panel influences the outcome and we show them you know the, the money the parts they, they they go home and they show their kids hey look at i'm part of this i'm actually part of the team and that's what we do here in the shop i mean i told you in the past when we were talking yeah. If you want to work with us, you come in, you get a job, but for you to move up the ladder, you need to bring me somebody better than you to replace you. And that's how we built our teams. We have a very strong team. Uh, sometimes I think we're like the Wizard of Oz. You know, you pull the curtain and then you have Diego and a bunch of guys behind him. And but we have the data. So I think that's our biggest weapon. Well, you know, and I love that, right? And you give people a way to climb the ladder. All right, well, you can climb, but you know, the train somebody to do what you do that's yeah. a direct reflection of you once you go up the ladder you made it you made a comment there color-coded plans right yes. uh, you were saying color-coded you also have a very bilingual you know and maybe not bilingual workforce that you're always dealing with and i would imagine when you're working around the world and so many people are speaking different languages um Doing digital plans and 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 how they go together and the language that goes with them could be very difficult as well. Is that something that you guys have tackled? Yeah. So you know when we start in language, you start with the colors of the gauge. Every gauge has a color, so that's already a given pattern or colors that you use. And then we you know we have the blue walls that are the non-bearing walls. The green walls require certain kind of shear walls. So as the process goes through and the workers look at the panels by the stamp and colors and yeah. the screens that we have, they move to the right location without, you know, we don't have supervisors. Everybody can pull the plaque here. I mean, we all do. I mean, if I have to sweep the floor, I'm over there. I mean, it's there's no hierarchies. It's very linear operation where everybody mm -hmm. has the power because the input is on all of us. Yeah, it definitely is. And so let's talk about this output before we get into some uh, some some more information here on, on SWS. But why don't we talk about what is SWS panel and what are you guys doing? Like, what is your day to day? Who's your customer? And then I want to get into a little bit about, you know, why are you guys the best in the industry when it comes to this stuff? Like you you have not only traveled the world, and I know you brought best practices together, but you guys have come up with some of your own solutions to increase your productivity immensely, yes? Yes, no, no, yes. So SWS, you know, S Superior Wall Systems, what the SWS stand from, it's a, it's a drywall company in California, getting close to 50 years of existence. So we know what we have to do in drywall. You know, we're very reliable. We, we are probably, I don't know if we're, the, the top 10 drywall companies in California and the union world. So about 12 years ago, they decided to go into modular construction and they opened a panel shop in the city of Southgate near downtown LA. And we start concentrating on type one construction. That was kind of the main way to go from being a drywall company to what's existing in the market at, at the scale that you have to have the 600 guys, 400 guys working. And it was type one, assisting living, hospitals, uh, some hospitality, but everything related to the type one definition, you know, mm -hmm. to our assemblies and all that kind of stuff. And as we went through that process, we bought some roll formers. We were stick framing at the beginning and just thinking about the accuracy. When you come with that drywall mentality, sometimes drywallers think from the bottom up. When you think low bearing, you go from the roof down. Right. So we merged the knowledge that we had in both companies and we attacked the market and we were very successful. I think to the day we're reaching 2.5 million square feet of building construction, not panels, building construction and getting close to 60,000 panels. And here in California, every panel weights anywhere from a thousand to 5,000 pounds each. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just 24 inches on center with some X bracing. We have seismic. It's a big challenge in this state. So yeah, that has sure. created this history. Well, I mean, there's something else about you, right? You spend a lot of time working through the seismic, uh, I guess, engineering uh, with the shake table out in California, right? You got you you do a lot of testing with the with the universities, from from what I understand. So we've been lucky enough to be invited by the University of California about 2016. I think there's a video we can probably show people where yep. we challenge a panel system to go six story high 
and replicate 150% the Northridge earthquake. And then at one point, we burned the second level and the top, one of the top floors to simulate the soft story problem that San Francisco has. What would happen to a light gauge building when you eliminate the shear? And we put it back to another test. Mm -hmm. So that has, you know, the government was involved, some of the big manufacturers, uh, just throw names out there. We were the ones who manufactured the panels. DPR was the one who actually installed the panels. Uh, Semco Supply, you got Simpson, you got all the all the big players trying to make sense of light gauge because yep. light gauge gets penalized in the engineering level and everything else a lot more than wood. I mean, it's really interesting what having money, being able to do lobby with engineers and building codes is all about. You know, it, that's but that's another conversation. <laughs> but uh, the industry is getting together. We standardize it and we put a test. Yeah. So this table was going in two directions. So this is like grabbing a building, mm -hmm. pushing it back and forward in a second, six feet. So it's like you're jumping six feet ahead and jumping back in one second. That's pretty right. much what happened to that building. And then we got great results, great details, great information to move forward here in California, especially with all these earthquakes. They just had an earthquake in Ecuador this weekend. Yeah. And it's crazy. Well, you know, it is crazy and the testing is so needed and we actually have a video. Why don't we play that video so people can see uh, what oh, yeah. you're talking about? Does that work for you? Yeah. And as we move forward, we're actually going to be doing the 10th story a year from now. Yeah. So this is, you know, the installation had to be attached to the bottom of the table. Then we went ahead, brought the panels, you know, and, and, and this level, our level of tolerance is 16. We put um, metal plates to simulate life load. So those are about 2,000 pounds, 2,500 each. So that's a... Uh, 150 the north is earthquake uh, wow. it's pretty interesting see at this point we're in the next step where we're burning and creating a soft story salute uh, option on the we had to use different type of things because it was a non-combustible building so and then this is the building after the fire and then so you see some really interesting scenes of how the building looks after no shear walls and everything has been burned and you see how the structure still hold itself i mean those are the Gear panels that they were detached already, but the building is staying in place. And after all those earthquakes, you'll survive, Dave. Earthquake, fire, earthquake, you walk away. We had a bet with the university that if they knock it down, we donate fifty thousand dollars. If if they don't knock it down, they pay me fifty thousand dollars. Took a long time for the university to write that fifty thousand dollar check to us, but they did it. It was interesting. That's awesome. Well, you know what? Put your money where your mouth is, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that's kind of what it is. You know, so these these uh, shake tables and earthquake, you know, machines like uh, like we're seeing there is, um, you know, it's so vital to understanding how these buildings are going to hold up, you know, for future builds. Like you're saying, look what happened overseas. Right. Yes. Uh, yes. In, 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 in those markets. And then when you see the islands are going through it as well, there's a lot of islands that are going through earthquakes and volcanic, you know, uh, explosions that shake the daylights out of the ground and everything else. But um you're not just doing steel, right? I mean, they're also mixing some of the steel with CLT and other products uh, to see what, what the combination actually can do and can withstand because at this point, we're seeing more hybrid builds than, than, than we have in the past. Yeah, there is no correct system, you know, and, and this is allowing us to think like, you know, we're, we're picking in the West Coast, in the, East, in the West Coast, some of the East Coast concepts of the, I call them the gravity walls where the concrete yeah. core comes up on the staircases. So we're bidding a couple of jobs that are big. They're close to a million square feet and they're 12 stories of light gauge over four podiums. So we'll be at 165 feet tall. So we we'll hope by the end of next year, we'll have that building up. You know, I always say, Dave, there's two things, saliva and sweat, you know, show me your sweat. Everybody has right. a lot of saliva, a lot of nice pictures, a lot of talking, show me your sweat. And that's what we do here. We sweat every day, you know, we sweat every day. Well, and know. that's it. And, and that's what allows you to make those confident $50,000 bets. Uh, I don't think I could go arm in arm with you in, uh, in Vegas, but I'll definitely come to an earth, uh, uh, an earth shaking machine with you for sure. So your shop in, in, in of itself, let's talk about that. Um, how, how big is your manufacturing? So our under roof, we're close to hundred thousand square feet and outside we have another hundred thousand square feet. Within the process, we have roll forming. We're certified with SFIA, IADMO. We do our own roll forming. We're a welding shop for the city of LA, which is a hard license to get. So we do, we have compression tables in order to do our less than an eighth inch gap in between the stud and the track. Uh, we have a welding shop 
and then we have screw bridges to attach the exterior finishes to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, to avoid all the problems that sometimes you get in logistics, we went ahead and purchased our own tracking system to do our own deliveries. So that's pretty much what our operation is. And we do anything from walls, floor panels. Uh, we roll form anywhere from 20 gauge to 14 gauge, 10 and 12 gauge uh, we purchase. And we're in the process of acquiring some of that equipment too. Sure. And, and what area do you service? LA is an interesting market. I mean, if we, we, we're going probably up to San Francisco, so we don't, it's hard for us to ease, go ease, Dave. We'll try. We tried a couple of jobs in Texas and Nevada. You do the same amount of work and you get paid less. So it's better to stay in California. I think we're here already. I see yeah. a lot of East Coast comp companies come this way and they realize there's earthquakes and salaries here are twice what they're used to pay. So... You made, a, you made an interesting market. comment before the show. Uh, how many brains do you have working versus how many hands do you have working? And that's the secret, the, drain, the brains. We, we use one brain for up to six hands. So one guy drawing or thinking for three guys in the shop. And right. that's the ratio. Uh, I mean, there's one to, one to four would be ideal. One to six is the ratio we're running right now. Yeah, and you said digital waste equals physical waste, but pre-planning, thinking things through in advance means less labor in the field. That is correct. Less labor in the field. You know, and that's why we do. The, that's why we never went wood framing. You know, we took. That's why we made the decision to go with steel because you control the inventory, you control the waste. Yeah. It's a different market, but uh, that's where the challenges are, and that's where we go back to, like when we talk about the way we see our industry. We try to be a company that is equified. And I learned this from that company that I used to work in. I mean, this is not my theory. This is something I learned working for that Swiss company, Latin America. This mm -hmm. is back in the late 90s, early 2000s, where their concept was to be friendly with the environment, generate profit, and be social responsible with your employees. And that's what we do here. And having that triple bottom car and thinking that way that you have to think of your people, you have to think of the environment and also think of making profit and might, and, you know, and juggle those balls to a yeah. level where sometimes we had to walk away from projects and people because that's not what they believe in has affected our bottom line, but they're the right decisions. Sometimes you learn a lot more from your no's than your yes. It's, it's easy to, you have to walk away. You have to learn how to walk away. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and culture is everything. It is. It is. And, and you, you guys have an amazing culture. culture. We do, you know, and sometimes it, 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 you know, sometimes it gets, I guess every day, but we have a culture where everybody has a full line. We have, we pay the education for our workers. You know, we have engineers yeah. in Arctic and Latin America that we have sent them to Europe to learn how to do BIM because that's probably where the best schools of BIM are. So they're in yeah. Spain and they still work for us. Same thing here in the shop. Everybody goes up. We put them to different universities and if you don't educate as a culture, as a Latino, the only, our only way out in this country is our brains. That's you right. know, we know how to build your building. We know how to take care of your kids. We know how to mind your lawn. We're thinking now. So we're, it's, it's about time we need to start learning. And I always say, you know, the, with the code that you put in right there, that, you know, you can't be a teacher and then you have to be a student. And the other saying, too, that they say that when the student is ready, the teacher will show up. I mean, that's like the most common one. And you know, it's so it, it's funny you said that because uh, I had a mentor years ago and it got to the point where I said to the mentor, I said, you know, when does the student become the teacher? Every day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I learn from my guys every day. I mean, going and talking to the guys in the back just to use how to grab the screw, the, you know, the RPMs, you use a grabber screw, they use a lock tip, just that. I, I always walk in the shop with $100 in my pocket and I call it the $100 idea. So whenever somebody comes up with a good idea, I give them a hundred dollars. You know, they don't care about a raise. They'd rather have the hundred dollars idea because it's like a trophy in the shop. Yeah, and yeah. Whenever you come to my shop, everything you see, it's the empowerment you do to your workers. And it's called the hundred dollar yeah. idea here. And we have a lot of fun with that, you know? Sure, uh, sure. Yeah. I think we're, it's we're very hard to each other, you know, because we love this thing. I mean, you should see the passion of the guys that we have. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. And wow. not just direct traffic. They're the ones doing the work. I just sit back and enjoy them.
Well, I tell you what, people are interested in this conversation, uh, Diego. I mean, we we probably have anywhere between 60 and 80 people watching right now on all the social media channels. I'm looking at it light up. There's a bunch of comments we'll get to as well. But, hey, listen, I thought just to show a little bit about who you are and where you got started, we should take ourselves down to the jungle. What do you think? There you go. Yeah, this project was 1998. I was forced to build an oil camp for Arco in the middle of the Amazon in Ecuador. So we brought some studs and chopped some trees, built our panel shop. So that was my first panel shop, 1998. Wow. And it was interesting. We're popping water for a river, you know, putting some different systems, you know, putting some beams. Right. And we were panelizing in the back. And uh, I had to go recruit people in the jails, day because nobody wanted to go to that jungle. Those things were 27, 21, 7, 21 days in, seven days out. And it was miserable. 100% degrees, 100% humidity, I think. It was it was interesting. And you see right there, we're doing the plumbing, setting up the plumbing, because our, our company used to have a PVC manufacturer too. Right. So as you can see, the panels are in the back, the trusses. And when people say, hey, what do you know about panels? I said, I don't know. Look at this picture, 1998. And we yeah. were using AutoCAD and drawing it by hand, and we were still had a tolerance of a 16 of an inch in our panels. I, uh, I think that's amazing. And 50,000 square feet later, I mean, look at that truck. We would love to have that truck, huh, Dave? Yeah, that's what that. I was saying. I love that truck, you know? We'll put some big old tires on that thing. We'll have ourselves a good time. I bet, yeah. it, I bet it could pull that whole building. And um, this was Arco, and it was interesting because all the engineers of Arco, you know, they're all Americans. They were all Latinos, yeah. we're all, all below 5'8", brown. Right. They, they couldn't believe it. They brought everybody on top of the building and making them jump to see if the deflection of the joys were going to work and everything else, but... We passed the test. That was our first challenge. Well, let's uh, let's get into a couple uh, other things here on the history. I think this is so important to say, like who you are. What are we looking at here? So this is the outside. Those are the 100,000 square feet that we have outside in the yard. Our yeah. yard is always packed. You know, I need real estate. So, so far, if you see, we've done about 2.3 million square feet of building. And right. that, in, that when you relate that to the panels, it's about 40,000 wall panels, 15,000 wall panels. And our secret is in the joints. I mean, we take full BIM. We do the, the joints for the red iron. We do the MEPs. And then we wow. do the coordination. But the secret is that we create a process. And at the end of this process, you end up with a panel. Mm -hmm. The panel is not our product. It's the process that we sell to the owners, the security that we give to a GC or an architect, that everything is being coordinated, that we have a lot of value engineering and to bring in drawings from a DD to a CD stage. Uh, this was a very challenging building. It was a nine-story building with a pool in the top and the middle of downtown LA. Uh, and you can see our staging area was that little area where the crane is. And we went straight up from this. And our rate right now on those cranes is probably about 5,000 square feet to 6,000 square feet of building per week. That's at the rate that we're installing right now. Uh, yeah, look at that. I'm going to actually, I'm going to go to a comment here I want to put up there that I think... Uh, you're going to, you're going to like, you're going to like Julian Boren, Diego oh. Presidente. <laughs> Good to Julian, see you. He's a character. Yeah. Hey, he's, he's fully bilingual. He pulled me one time. I was talking in Spanish and then he started giving me, yeah, Julian is, Julian is something else. He's trying to make a change in the industry. And we you know we're yeah. still trying to find a way to bring his products to California and, and do a little more into the modular buildings and to the, you know, the, where everybody's going modular, you know, we're, we're, we're migrating. I think we're going to go from panels to modular and that's kind of our next step, but I I'm learning from the inside out. You know, we don't go by and spend millions of dollars in equipment. We spend time in people. We are right. resources as the people. And then we bring basics and technology together and we have the outcome that we have done so far. So I think we're in the right path. You know, it's but not about the million dollar equipment. It's about your people. It's people. People oh, he said Presidente, not Presidente. Got it. He probably He's wants to be a Presidente, me. too. He will be a Presidente. He said Presidente, not Presidente. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, it's live, Julian. What do you expect? Good to see you, though, man. Hopefully I get to see you in a, another week or so. If you're going to be out at World of Modular, it would be great to catch up. But here's what I'm hearing, and I hope everybody else out there is hearing this as well, and that is – invest in the brains, invest into your people. Um, you know, and, and, and I, I've spent time with, uh, you Diego and it was funny, you know, the, the conversations one has, uh, at restaurants or, 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 you know, even on the show floor, but, you know, we were talking about, you can tell a lot by somebody's bathroom on how they treat the people. 
Yeah. And that's yeah. true. And I think we always have to remember that. And you can tell that in a manufacturing facility as well. So if you own a manufacturing facility and you have your own nice bathroom that you go to, but everybody else is using the one with the doors falling off, uh, I would rethink yeah. that. Yeah. And are that's you using that bathroom? Yeah. I use the workers' bathroom. I would never use my own bathroom. No way. Right. Right. No well, then. Yeah. That's it. That's it. All right. Let's keep going on a couple more of these here. I just want to fly through some uh, some of the stuff you have. So this is some of the critical path that I was telling you, correct? So the critical path goes from the foundations to the red iron, to yep. the MEP, to the bin coordination, and then the panelization of everything. So we create this path where we concentrate on the process and not the panel. And that's the value that you bring to owners. Right. Um, we have different steps that we do within our process. You know, we built the parametric models. We're fully into that technology. You know, we do the fully coordination with all the trades. I got trades that they don't, some projects, they don't even know how to draw. So we'll draw for the MEP. We'll do yeah. the layouts. You know, we do the due diligence on our floor panels and our joints. Then we go to the fabrication. And then finally, we go to the field and do the execution. And so it's from day one. Because a lot of companies, and something that we're learning is if you don't install your products and you're relying on third party, and we've been there, it's not where you need to go. If you're manufacturing, you should be installing or at least be present during the installation. Because it's hard when everybody starts pointing fingers and they want to blame you that the panel was crooked or, and it's that they, you know, they probably run it over with a forklift. So you have to have presence from the architect, the engineer, the manufacturer in the installation process and walk away and leave your babies behind. Right. Well, that's it. You become a partner to whomever you're working with, and you're thinking of the entire project, not just your own piece of the pie. And I think that's what makes for a successful project all the way around. And I know we'll get into it, but your customers are repeat customers all the time. And I think people need to understand that as well. All right, let's keep going here. So see, this is a simple thing you see in that picture where everybody's got layout. The red iron has a layout, the blue lines for the MEP, for the plumbing, even though it's not our scope, they get put and located in the right location. If you move to the next one, and that's what happens on the form. Oh, uh, here we every, are. Yep. Every panel has a final location. And uh, you can see we do the layout gets done again right after the form concrete. And when our panels come in, you get that level of technology of accuracy an eighth of an inch you see that two hour hour wall the door yep. it's an assistant living so it's two hours to a one hour wall so you can see how the wall got shipped five eighths for the two layers so we get to yeah. that detail even on the layout so when our panels come in you're already taking an account that two layers in one side of the corridor and then one hour in the inside and the door is a non-bearing wall so that's a typical assistant living project detail sure. fall downs operate you know they're right where it needs to be the secret is on the drawings i mean this is just printing here, you know, in our industry, okay. Well, I wanted I wanted to say something about this. You met uh, you met a you met a, a person that I respect immensely, uh, Amir from Windover Construction, while we were out there, uh, Stuart, the CEO, and and you should talk to them. I think they are the ones that have uh, used the robot that does all the line layouts. Yeah, and yeah. you could just throw it on the slab; it would lay all that out, put all the details on. Uh, super cool. That's just what it's what it reminded me of. Oh, you know, two great, great minds together. Great. You guys could solve all the world's problems. Probably you had you had Jolien into that, and my God, I guess we'd be building on Mars already. Yeah, and him as a president, uh, even better. Yeah. <laughs> See here, something very traditional. Red Iron always goes first because yeah. Red Iron and MEP always got the best drawings in the industry, correct? Because they have mm -hmm. to manufacture. We tell them to step to the side. And we just ask him, what is your tolerance? So you see those arrows right there? They will tell me, hey, I need a, a half an inch tolerance between your panels. So we go out three stories and then they drop their brace frames and we drop our panels. But they love the, the coordinations we do with them because at this point they bring one day the crane and they get everything installed in one day and they don't have to use cables or nothing to hold that panel. And it's plumb and is inside the wall within the fire rating and we're happy, they're happy. That's great. Same thing with the staircases. We design the landings and then, you know, the, 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 the threads just come like that. And that one is a tricky connection because you have to weld them in the top. There is steel mm -hmm. is not wood. I don't have a hammer to stretch it or shrink it. Right. This one is dead center. There's no other option. So it's got to be precise. The joints. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So why don't we go to a couple comments here real quick. And if we have some time, we'll get to some more of these uh, awesome uh uh, diagrams and photos that you have here, because there is a ton of them that we can go through. 
Uh, cause we got your, we, we probably should show your software and a little bit of the vision, but let's, let's say hi to a few people real quick. What do you think? There you go. Let's do it. All right. Well, you met this guy oh, out oh, there. Oh. Hello, Andrew Seely. Hello from Phoenix. Great show coming up and a great start to the week. Um, good to see you, Andrew. Always, always a pleasure to see you. Doing great work. Best in the West. I Ooh, love it. Exactly. Thank you for joining us from YouTube today. Too hooked. Appreciate you. We got Dennis McMahon, Diego mm. Rivera. What a star of offsite you are. Congrats. Look at you. Wow. Fan club. Are we signing anything and sending it out? Hey, yeah. Toby in the house. We got Russ Willis, man. One of the one of the smartest guys on the manufacturing floor right there when it comes to cold form steel. How do I know? Check out our cold form steel that we just uh -huh. did. Uh, we've been releasing. Always a great time discussing the industry with Diego Rivera as well as Dave Cooper. Uh, Russ, like I said, if uh, those videos go viral and you make the big screen, uh, I get 10% of everything. Just letting you know. He's doing awesome. He's been here yeah. in the shop. We, we, we met. We met. You know, I'm always open. You know, we're always open to, we have to unify as an industry. I'm always talking to Russ to figure out how to do things faster. He's yeah. building the one he did where it goes straight up. I mean, that thing was beautiful. I mean, he's doing a great job over there. He is, he is doing a great job. And if anybody actually wants to see that series, it is on our YouTube channel. We walk you all the way through the production site with AR, augmented reality, uh, as all the way through the job site, which is right across from the Cleveland Clinic. And it's a big project. So if you want to learn a little bit about something about cold form steel, uh, there you have it. You'll be able to see it. And you get to be able to see Russ. He's got the cool chop sideburns love it all right nolan brown in the house what's happening go diego rivera nolan brown good to see you my friend no stranger to danger here diego is a true visionary and innovator i bet you'd say the same thing about jerry mccahy wouldn't you oh yeah i used to tease him i tell him you're god and he's like don't call me god <laughs> don't call me god he, he is he is the one i mean jerry it's incredible how humble he is with all the knowledge he has i mean he is incredible yeah he, he is incredible, and he's become a, a, a good uh, friend and trusted colleague through the years. So good to see you, uh, Jerry. I don't know if I'll see you at World of Modular or not, Jerry. Will you be there? Let us know. Let the world know. You better be there. Henry Mickelberg. Thanks, Diego, for explaining my underwhelming career. Couldn't find anyone better than me to replace me. <laughs> I don't know if you know Henry. That's coming across from uh, France. France, yes, yes, yes. I follow him a lot and read a lot of his comments. Very aggressive. He's very straightforward guy. He is. He is. He called that's you aggressive. Great. That's that's an <laughs> understatement. He's uh, actually though. I think the the reality of it is he's very straightforward and he likes to have real conversation. Uh, and he does not have a problem punching holes in a conversation just to make the conversation even better. And I think that's what we need more of in this industry as well. We sure hey, Demita, good to see you. Love the video of Shake Tables. Great simulation. It's good to see you as well. Gene Hamill, great info. Thanks for joining us from uh, YouTube. Love it, love it. Leo Oliveira, Diego is all about sweat, sweat and saliva. Right? He has a great shop in Texas, too. Leo is doing some interesting stuff, too. He's also trying to figure out how to put the data going forward. Great shop, too. So when you say a shop, he has a panelization shop? Yeah, yeah, in Texas. And we talk about data. He's like, hey, let me use your software. So we're in the process of trying to figure out how we can go from something that we create to solve our problems. And now I'm starting to see when I talk to everybody, they're like, hey, we need this. And I'm like, okay, well, let's figure out. So I have to go from a product designer to be a service provider. And I don't know if I want to be a babysitter yet, but uh, I'm looking into migrating some of the software, some, at least to some of the people of our industry yeah. to help them out build a better panel. Well, you know, you babysat me while we were in Phoenix for two, three days. You did a great job at it. I can tell you, I need somebody to keep me in line. Here we go. Dennis McMahon, Diego Rivera, with all the data you've collected, would be great to understand how your offsite solutions impact on timelines and budgets compared to the on-site option. Excellent question. Thanks, Dennis. Do you want me to pick, pick, pick that? Yeah, oh, yeah. go oh, for it. You know, something that we learned in the past two years is some of this data that we get from the Revit models now whatever happens on the shop is even affecting my estimating model because it's everything collected. So by me affecting my estimating model with the data of production, it's allowed me to get a better budget. I have less waste and I'm walking away from contingencies. And you know, a lot of the GCs and we love contingencies as a way to keep secure. We have zero contingencies in our shop. We use value. We use, you know, predictions of the price of the steel and things like that, but no more contingencies and have that impacts the, the, the timeline 
is it's, we treat it almost like a stool where you have a schedule on the job site, you have your procurement and the materials you have purchased, and then you have your available force. And based on that, we wrote an algorithm that determines the sequence of the panels based on those three variables, schedule, materials, and labor. And that has improved our just-in-time process because you buy roll formers and they go 1,000 in your feet, 2,000 in your feet an hour, but then your workers are going at 40, 50. So we reduce the speed of the roll formers, get more accuracy, but we do a just-in-time panel to avoid the inventory problem that we have by storing in tons of panels. They just get manufactured as is needed, hopefully within one or two weeks of this installation day. Yeah, perfect. Appreciate the uh, the question. We're going to get into uh, some other things. I want to show this a little bit of the inside of the software, and then we'll get to a couple more uh, comments, and I think we have another question or so out there, uh, and then we're going to wrap it up. So, excuse me, why don't we hop into that? What do you think, Dave? What are we looking at here? So, you know, I can tell you this is, we go everything, since we have a Yadmo and SFIS certification, we need traceability. So this is kind of our inventory of our software where you put the gauge, the materials goes back to the database, tell me what coils I have available, what project is being used. And this is the part that we walk away from Excel sheets and everything else and went digital by collecting the data. And it, this also updates the prices of what that steel was purchased. So it allows me to do my budget with the other question, if I buy steel at 20, you know, 80 cents, and then I'm buying it at a dollar, then tomorrow is at 150. I can do a mix of the material I already purchased, the material I'm gonna replace, the material I have existing, and be able to make decisions on jobs. You know, do we wanna get our money back on that material? Yeah. Do we wanna sell it at the current price? Is it the replacement? So this is what this section of the software is, is the full control of the procurement. This is kind of the software where we, I get to see the different stages See right there, we have different stages on those columns, like architecture right. ready, MWF ready. And I get to see the sequence of those panels. We have 248 panels, I think it says to be 250. And then mm -hmm. right now, as you can see in that one, 142 have sheeted, 147 being, G, uh, being uh, QC, 55 have been delivered. And this tracks everything. And those curves allows our production managers to get an input of what's coming behind them and how to program the next week. We also went to the point where every single panel has been traced by every station. So this one, you see the job is job 214, second wall, panel one. And then those lines tell you what it is. And there's the color code. A red panel for us is an exterior panel. So we installed the dance class. Mm -hmm. And then we run the tickets. The I, mean, I don't know if you have another. Let me see if the other screen has more information. Yeah, so this is what I call a heat map. This is, and that's why you see in back yeah. of my wall, it's live. And it's blinking and it's giving me live data. As the designers in Europe get an R5 and they put a panel on hold, it automatically feeds the Revit database. And as my workers scan the QRC of that panel, the screens go red and they tell them, don't build it, R5 pending. And same thing with the shop, talks back to the engineers that we have in staff and my designers. And then you get things like this where, see this panel had a, a couple R5s or pending, so it got stopped. And then on the bottom, you see the sequence, who did the drawing, who did the shop drawing, the layout was done on the word version. Because a lot of panel shops that still do paper trails. You know, you get a piece of paper, the next day another drawing comes in, then you run into the shop and then the panel has been manufactured. Right. So we, you know, we bet on data and now we create softwares that apply the same thing we were doing in the past on a more digital perspective, you know, so it became a tool. Uh, we use different softwares like Forge and everything else where here you can see my tickets, my different status. And as you click on it and, and the parts, it lights up and it tells you where things are. It feeds the Revit Matter automatically. The CNC files sent to the role former, sends back to the data, sends back to the Revit model. And the designers in Europe or the installers in the field or the guys in the shop get to know what's being manufactured and it's ready to go. And that's part of the coils yeah, inventory the filter one. as well. Yeah. That's the same. Yeah, that's yeah. the same slide that we saw at the beginning. Right, yeah. right. Perfect. And then there's yeah. a lot of things. Then, then we go to procurement. Then we go to time cars, artificial intelligence, face recognition. What? Uh, there's, all, yeah, they're all there. They're all there. We're, but I think this is the one that pays the bills. The other ones are still in the process. But this one is the one that controls the money. 
So let's put this up here real quick because I want people to see the inside of your shop. I mean, you actually have digital technology in the shop and all the color coding as well. I can yeah, see it see, from here. That's an interesting thing. I mean, you see that tool right there that, he, yeah. that Ismael built it? That's the $100 idea right there. And then this is a guy who's probably in his late 40s. And he was a, he's a great framer. I mean, you give him anything and he builds it. And you yeah. can see how his transition has been going from the paper knowledge that he has, very organized in his paperwork where we put a computer and a scanner, same thing in the shop. You know, every panel gets scanned on the screens. The latest version of the joint comes in. And this is how we record time. This is where we record data and we know how many guys are there. And then in the top, there's some uh, cameras. They're this registering their movements and how many guys are actually there. And this is kind of the concept that I was telling you that I learned that you have to take care of your people. You have to generate profit and be aware of the planet. And that's yeah. why we went with steel, you know, and then, and when it comes to the planet and the environmental value that we bring to the company, we have a lot of control in our trash, our waste. Yeah. And that's why we chose to roll from. So let me understand this, right. Just seeing that for the first time. This is really uh, an end-to-end -end system that you've created. I mean, all the way from the procurement of the materials and knowing what you have through the production process and out the door to the job site. Yeah. I mean, when is the that, needs are there, you know, the needs are there and there's nothing out there. Is that, is that why there. everybody's chasing you down and pounding on your door, Diego? Because that's what I saw when I was out at Advancing Prefab. Like, you know, it, it was quite interesting to watch uh, how many people were very interested in – uh, what you have, you and your team, I should say, have developed. Yeah, and it's more my team more than I am. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm just the. I think that if you're gonna direct an orchestra, you should know at yeah. least how each instrument plays. You know, so I direct the orchestra, and all my instrument players, they know. You know, they're really savvy, and what? everybody put has put a screw. Even the guy designing the software, he needs to come to the shop and put screws and learn the process. I don't just guy or you know people that they tell me, oh, I'm a, I don't know. A software developer and doesn't even know what construction is. Yeah. And that's where I see that architects are making a big role in this thing. And, and I'm really happy and excited about that. Well, you know, Dennis says that he's uh, in love with the software. So thank you, Dennis. I'm glad. Uh, I don't know if uh, that's something that Diego can send you a pillow that says, I love. <laughs> what, what would the pillow say? SWS panel, send him a heart pillow. Thanks, uh, Dennis. We appreciate you. More sweat, no saliva. Josh Sports Cal says Diego is the best. Good to see you. Uh, we also have Pablo. Uh, how do you say Elias? Uh, yeah, congratulations, yeah. Diego. Pablo is my mentor. Pablo, como estas? I, I am who I am because of Pablo. He was my first teacher. He's he's who I am. I started yeah. this whole thing because of him. Yeah. Here's the yeah. Pablo. A little a little chair. Yeah. yeah. He's well, I love it. Thank you uh, for commenting with us, uh, Pablos, and joining our show today. All right, two last questions. Let's get through them here. We're well over time, but this has been a great conversation. Uh, first question is going to be from Demita, and then we're going to end with uh, Julian Bowen. Uh, Demita says, any known on comparison of waste reduction of modular versus panel builds? I can tell you that the trash bins that I have in my shop, they're 36 inches by 36 inches by 24 inches. You know, when you have the drawings done right and you're roll forming, your waste is minimal, minimal, minimal. And the 55,000 panels that we manufacture, I think I have less than 200 panels that we made a mistake that we had to rebuild them. And then those panels got taken apart. And, and you know, and I, ha and I have some of those sitting really? outside. So whenever new people come in, I'll show them the panels. I, I keep them as trophies because- it's the process. The secret is the process and the drawings. Wow. You know, I'm super excited. I, I hope I hope all of these people that are out there listening and watching, and I see people inviting other people to this conversation, which means they're interested in hearing more and seeing more. I truly hope that they reach out to you and, uh, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can help teach other people because that's what you love to do. All right, last question, and then we're going to wrap it up here. Julian is back. He said, can you talk about seismic compliance? That's a big challenge, you know, and especially the way steel gets penalized in the building code against wood. But there's bigger challenges when it comes to connections, to standardizing uh, different ways of transforming you know, that diaphragm of the floor to the lateral forces of the walls. You know, you have Sensum, you have MyTech coming out with different systems. Some of the stuff that Julian is doing is pretty ingenious where 
you know, you get a red iron frame to do the full connection and how that connects to the foundations and the footings. We're not there yet. Uh, we're still using 1990s concepts, uh, you know, like in the steel framing world, the prescriptive method. And I think engineers and building codes and the, the association needs to step in. I mean, you have Dietrich yeah. and Senko trying to do something, but we need more. I mean, Wood has done a great job. We follow them. I mean, you have to learn from them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And listen, if anybody wants to meet Diego, he will be coming to our private event in uh, Las Vegas on the 28th. Uh, if you're an executive, you're in this manufacturing space and you would like to join us, uh, look, I'm using you as a hook now, Diego. I'm like, Diego's got to be there. Uh, we are doing that on the 28th, the day before World of Modular starts. Please DM us if you're interested. Uh, and like I said, you're in this space. You can come uh, You can come do the tour with us and you can hang out with other executives and CEOs from around the world. And I mean that. We have people from around the world coming to this private invite-only event. Love to hear from you because maybe we don't know about you and you deserve to be there with us. So reach out to us. All right, a couple more quick ones here. I know... Uh, AG Mesa, AG Mesa, Diego is the best. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then Julian. I uh, was doing a power in Ecuador. She worked for us doing a, a curtain wall with EFA systems with Stowe in South America two years ago. She's you know, a great architect. And you know, we have not been to Central or South America on this show yet. We have a we have a month long tour coming up in Europe here in just a few weeks, uh, July through August. We'll be there for five weeks. So if you're in Europe uh, and you want to learn, but Diego, we should plan on doing a Central Central America and South American tour next summer or spring or whenever Let's the best time is to be there. Don't you think that sounds like fun? There's some great manufacturers over there. You see, the difference over there is that. Wood is only in Chile, maybe a little bit in Costa Rica, but everything is light gauge yeah. because you're going light gauge against concrete. And there's some great manufacturers, there's some great process and places to learn. I mean, the fish tank USA, it's very small when you go to the ocean. The ocean, you, the best education you give to your kids is a plane ticket. Yeah, I love and, that. And you know, you've been all over the world and you see what they're doing in Europe. It's amazing. You just have to keep going. I mean, we build stuff in Nigeria, Australia, New Zealand. That's all those countries that we've done some luggage projects and is due to the openness of the concept well let's go i'm ready we're out of here all right here's the last here's the last question it's a yes or no answer oh, actually there's two jen put one more in there uh automation automated information delivery to flexible human workers more cost effective than robots yes or no yes Quick answer. All right. Thanks, Julian. All right. Osama Alavi, one of my other favorite people who is in Europe, in Switzerland. We met while we were on our tour over there. Uh, you want to talk about smart individuals? This is one of them. Uh, Diego, let's talk pre-engineered and prefabricated seismic isolation foundations. Now, I have to tell you, awesome. Diego, there's a lot behind this one, and this is one conversation you're going to want to have. We Any want thoughts that. on that? We need that. Yeah, we need to let's isolate do the foundations. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's put one a on a shake table. Structure. Yeah, we'll we do it on a shake one. table. We got one, right? Somebody we're has doing, one. We're doing a year from now. It's about ten stories, and we're going all. We're thinking of even introducing some modular concepts. So the the forum is open right now. Anybody who wants to be part of this team that we're putting together. Uh, the University of San Diego just retrofit the uh, the, the shaker table test. And now it's going not just this direction, but it's going in both directions. So we're in the process of putting that together. Oh, uh, look at it. Good guys. All right. Man. Build Tech welcomes you to Costa Rica. I love Costa Rica. You just you just let us know when we'll get some sponsors and we will come down there and do our show. And we'd love to showcase what everybody's doing uh, in Central America and South America, wherever the case is. It's so important that uh, we start talking as a global community because guess what? We're doing business as a global community. People need to know you're there uh, so we can do things great always. So it just keeps coming. Leanne, construction, it's always on the process. So That's my nephew right there. He's one of my engineers. I, you have to, you know. Luis, Eduardo, Luis Eduardo Rivera. I love it. I love it. Brain. So it's all, it's a lot of nepotism here. No, 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 not nepotism. Well, listen, I appreciate it. 
I appreciate everybody. We're out of time. We're way over time. You, you, you definitely have what it takes. You lit up the show today. There's a lot of people out there on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. Hey, if you're not following us on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. We are interviewing people like Diego from around the world all the time, trying to bring you the best and the brightest in our community so we can all build it better. So, Diego, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show today. Oh, no. Thank you, Dave. It was an honor. Thank you. Hopefully I didn't miss anything that you wanted to get out there. Did I miss anything? No, we did great. We're good? Good, good, good. Yeah. All right, listen, everybody else, we will be back this Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern, and again on Friday at 1 o'clock with my good friend Mark Bare Naked Willie talking about building science, and then guess what? Heading to Las Vegas. So I'm putting it out there. If you're interested in joining us in Las Vegas for a private tour of Boxable Cocktail Hour and some drinks and dinner, with some of the biggest executives that own manufacturing around the world, well, you're going to want to join us. Send us a private DM, and if it's a fit, we'll see if we can uh, get you on the invite list. Diego, you stay right there. The rest of you, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye now. Adios. What an amazing show. Thank you to all of our sponsors for helping us to continue to bring all of these innovative conversations to all of you out there. Please visit them, see what they have to offer you. And as always, subscribe to the YouTube channel and ring that bell. It would mean the world to us. I'm Dave Cooper.